it's been getting a lot colder here and uh, we've been craving something warm and comforting and I haven't had French onion soup since I've been vegan and it's been about three years almost come January. So I've decided to give it a shot. So that's what we're gonna make today. Traditional French onion soup has beef broth, but I found these not beef cubes that are gluten-free vegan. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be using to kind of get those same flavors in our soup today. The seasoning is pretty basic. You, um, I might throw some garlic in here that I don't have out, but what we're gonna be using is a ton of onions. And a tip that my mom actually told me is to put them in the fridge and it should make it to where you don't cry quite as much while you're cutting all of your onions up. So hopefully that works. So for now, I'm gonna get to cutting. So I'll be honest and say that um, the onion trick kind of worked, but not on all the onions. I'm crying a little bit. If anyone has any great tips on how to not cry when you're cutting five or six giant onions, leave them in the comments below. <laughs> whatever vegan butter that you like. I just, if I'm wanting something a little more indulgent and that I actually want to taste the butter, I love the Miyoko's, but there's also the Earth Balance, which is really good too. Um, so I'm not gonna use all of this just cause I don't want it to be that guilty. Probably, probably this knob here, I don't know. That's maybe like a tablespoon and a half or so of butter. We're just gonna put that in and get that melting down a little bit. Like turn the temperature down to start. And we're gonna go ahead and add in our bowl, giant bowl of onions. It looks like a lot, but it's gonna cook down a ton, so. And this is the part that takes a lot of time. So you see that wine over there? You can go ahead and open that and have a glass <laughs> while you wait until you need to add a little bit to your, to your soup. If you have a bigger pot, you know, you could use a bigger pot, but. This is the biggest one I have right now, and it's my favorite pot to cook in. It belonged to my husband Tanner's grandma, so it's very special to me and to us. So we're just gonna try and keep these moving around a little bit. They'll start to kind of soften pretty quickly. And you can also add a little bit of salt on top. It'll help pull some of the water out of the onions and kind of help the caramelizing process happen even even quicker. So actually in this recipe, um, I've seen several different ones where some use a dry white wine, some use a dry red wine. This wine, I'm not actually sure if it's dry or sweet. I don't typically go for sweet wine, so I'm hoping it's it's on the drier side, but anyways, I think that red or white, whatever you prefer, you can add to the soup just to kind of, um, whenever we're ready to deglaze the pan. But I'm gonna enjoy the glass now while I wait. It's only been a couple of minutes, but they are starting to kind of sweat down. It's not quite as packed in here, but I'm kind of assuming this will take about, I don't know, 25 to 30 minutes before we can get them that real golden caramelized color. So we'll check back. We're going to be onion soup. French onion soup. French onion soup. Like from Paris. So I decided to put the lid on and just kind of let it do its thing for a bit, but it's been about 10 minutes now. Um, so it has cooked down quite a bit. Sorry to fog you out there. But yeah, this is what we're kind of looking for. We're just, it's kind of a waiting game. Just toss them about, just we're wetting them to get brown, but you know, they've already reduced about by half. So all those onions are gonna turn into not very much, but they're gonna be super tasty when they do. 
I'm going to see you some snacks while they're waiting. Um, so right now we're eating some snacks. This is our, our appetizer, our pre-onion soup snack. Veggies and ranch. Just ranch. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. Not sponsored, just like it. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy, which one's your favorite? Probably the carrot. Probably the carrot? Cool. I like the cauliflower and the broccoli the most. Okay, there we go. We're finally starting to get some color on these guys, which is a good sign. We still need to be patient and take our time because the more color these can get, the more flavor. I'm just gonna let them go a little bit longer. And then we're gonna use our wine to deglaze. I think we need a little bit more time. Get them a little bit darker. But the house smells delicious. Okay, so I decided um, since we're using these cubes, I'm gonna go ahead and dissolve them in some hot water. So we had a bit of a, a dilemma. My one side of my pot was getting scorched and I was panicking. So we're gonna go ahead and I found, Tanner found our Dutch oven. So we're trying to get all the good flavors out, all the onions out, none of the burnt stuff because we don't want to put our stock in and get all that burnt flavor. We just want the oniony caramelized goodness. So now it's, so now it's time. It's time. It's time to add a little bit of thyme. I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle some of that. If you had like dry herbs or fresh herbs, um, then you can kind of make a bundle and add that in, but I don't have that, so I'm just gonna do some thyme, um, some bay leaves, and just because I love garlic, I don't know if it's necessarily traditional, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. And then some black pepper. We might add more salt later, but for now I'm just gonna leave it alone. And we're gonna pour in our concentrated amount of stock and let that kind of simmer and I'll top it off with a little more water here in a bit. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm making Piper's lunch for school tomorrow. So since we're waiting for the soup to finish, I'm gonna make lunch for pre-K tomorrow. So I give her some fruits and veg, a sandwich, uh, we use this honest kids juice and then um, some sort of something crunchy and then if she eats really good her teacher will let her have a little treat so sometimes I'll stick like an Oreo or a Justin's small um, peanut butter cup in there um, but this is what she's getting tomorrow. Don't get crumbs in the mic, the new camera. So this is looking really tasty. It's been simmering for a while. So I think we're probably about ready to put them in bowls. Um, do the bread, the cheese, broil, and then dinner. Probably with a salad on the side, you know, balance. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna slice up some bread and this is just a traditional baguette. I went to our Sprouts and all of the French uh, bread, all the French bread that they had, said it contained milk and eggs and all that stuff, so I, I don't really know why. I looked at the ingredients and it didn't say it in there, but I didn't wanna risk it. And so we're just gonna go for this baguette and it's supposed to be crispy and you know semi-stale bread anyway, so I figure it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna slice a few slices to kind of top 
our bowls. I think I'm gonna do three slices for uh, mine and Tanner's bowl, and then I'll do maybe, maybe just one slice for Piper's bowl for the top of her small bowl. slices as well too. <laughs> this is, you know, this is where it gets indulgent. You go, you go for it with the cheese because you want that to get real brown and crispy and melty. And luckily that's what Miyoko's does. So that's why I'm using this one today. We really didn't add that much salt or anything. We cooked with a little bit of butter in the beginning, but for the amount of soup and onions and everything that we used, I think it's, it's all right for, for every now and then. I'm gonna put these on a pan just so it's easier to maneuver in and out of the oven. And we're gonna put them on broil on high for probably about two to three minutes. I'm gonna watch it the whole time so we don't want it to burn, but we do want it to get brown and bubbly and crispy. So. I'm just putting the last bit of this uh, mozzarella and a few pieces of bread in a baggie and I'm gonna make a bowl for Tanner's mom because she's recently, well, I guess not recently, it's basically been a year since so, she's now vegan too. So it's really cool when she makes recipes and gives them to us to try and I like to make fun recipes, and give them to her to try. So Tanner's gonna take this to work with him tomorrow to give to his mama. And hopefully she likes it. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> Okay, vegan cheese obviously melts slower than regular cheese, so they've been in there a while, but we're just watching it because we want a little bit of color happening on our cheese. French onion soup. This is delicious. You should make this. It takes a long time. It takes a really long time. But it's worth it. It's fantastic. It's so savory. It's warming. It's like comfort food at its best. So I'm gonna go sit on the sofa because that's what we do around here. We go sit on the sofa around our coffee table as a family by our Christmas tree. And we're gonna eat our soup and probably watch a Christmas movie. A Christmas movie. A Christmas movie? Yeah, I wanna watch. Daddy, we're doing a video only for you. Only for you. What do you wanna watch? Um, I wanna watch like the Christmas movie called Elves. Elf. Elf. Elf with the big elf. Mhm. Mm the funny one. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us while we cooked our dinner. Um. It's just a little evening in our life, um, cooking a meal. Sometimes it's extravagant, sometimes it's not at all. Sometimes it's something from the freezer, but today I decided to try something new. It took a little bit of time, but it was totally worth it. It's so good and we're gonna have leftovers, so I'm excited. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And subscribe. And subscribe if you wanna see more. See you Bye. soon.